There we go. Okay, cool. So, let's teach you how to use the TriCaster. Have you ever used a live switcher before? That one time. One time? Oh, yeah. Okay, so stand over here. Um, and then make sure that you're not in this shot. There you go. I don't know where you're going to have to stand. There you are. Um, okay, so how a normal switcher will work, um, and some switchers, some people don't uh, do it this way, but you, you have a live bus, which is the red one, and then you have a preview bus, right? So if I was going to move this shot from this one into, say, the second, my second input, I would first choose it on my preview, so I can see it over here, and then I would switch to it by hitting either the auto or take. If I do auto, it's going to do whatever transition I have applied, so I have just a normal fade. If I do take, it's just going to take immediately to it. And you can see that they, they're going to switch between the two, right? Erk, bam. Well, you, they can't see it, but you can, um, where it switches in between the two. So that's, you know, super basic. Um, uh, the TriCaster has eight inputs, so you're going to be able to delegate whatever sources you want into eight of them. Justin, TV is off the air? Huh. Well, that's weird. Are we sure? <laughs> and we're back. He's two minutes back. Huh. That's weird. Huh. The stream looks fine on my end. I think it was uh it's either a Ustream and Justin TV thing or we just lost internet. I'm confused. Anyway, so um uh this is actually good because I wanted to do a larger um class with everyone, but this will help me sort of gather my thoughts on how to teach the TriCaster. So, um uh Let's let's only f don't look at any of this stuff. Just look at this f these first two rows in the T bar area. Um, so uh, using using these two rows is is where you're mostly going to switch everything. So whenever I'm switching a show, normally I'll do it the the much the way you're not supposed to do it by just jumping live inputs by just hitting these these red buttons and, and switching between them just like that that's how I do it for OMG craft and that's how I do it for for most of my other shows that's dangerous because um, you don't get live previews of what these are so you have to know exactly what you're switching to uh, I happen to know that my second input is always is going to be that camera I know that my first input is this camera I know that my third input is that camera so that's a risky way to switch and that's why if you ever see in our shows um, I'm like someone's talking and then I'll be like cut to this and it's like oh that's not what I wanted cut away uh, that's why that happens. The, the the safer way to do it would be to put it in your preview. You'd notice because it shows up. I wonder if I have a camera of anything. Nope, I don't. Uh, because it shows up in your in your other in your other one. You'll be like, well, that's not what I wanted. Give me that one instead, and then I'll, I'll transition. Um, so that's probably the correct way you're supposed to do it. And in fact, on the old TriCaster, you couldn't even uh, uh, switch. You couldn't switch this way appropriately because. As you were putting a, a source, and I believe the new TriCaster works this way, but um, uh, much, much faster. As you're putting a source into the, pr the preview, it's actually loading it up and buffering it. So it would have sources that, like, you would see it on the old TriCaster. You don't really see it now. Um, maybe you can if you do it really fast. Not really. Um, but you would see it go, like, warb, warb, whoop. And then it would like lock down, like it would do like a gin lock sort of thing. Um, so maybe putting it in, in in preview, you know, helps that as well. Um, I guess let's get into okay. So uh, if you ever want to bring up a lower third, like say this, you can either remember that it's the DSK button because DSK one is about all we do lower thirds with, or you can remember the more complicated thing that DSK stands for downstream keyer, which is what they used to call like anything you would do with lower thirds. So it's keying out an alpha channel, which is why you have this transparency um, on it. Um, and we happen to, on the uh, TriCaster, have two, we have two downstream keyers. So we can, and, and this can be any source, um, or it can be a still image, um, or a title, or, um, 
what else can it be? A frame buffer, a DDR, or net input. So, um, so that's what you know. That's, so, uh, uh, like if I take number two, you would think, oh, it's a downstream keyer. It's going to be a different lower third. But in fact, it's actually an image, and you can choose what these are going to be with this uh, uh, utility bus delegate. So you see the FX button is highlighted. That means that that is delegating whatever is in the FX uh, uh, bus. If I do aux out, I can click it. You can see aux out is two. So I actually have the aux sending to that stream. So if I change it, it's going to be like pink, and then it'll change. Oh, wait, no. I actually don't have it to that stream. I have it to, I have it to um, those, those TVs. So you can see that if I change... I can change it like really fast on the fly, just like that. Um, now then, one thing, yeah. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, so change that back to OMG Craft, and let's make sure it's playing good. Um, DSK one is set to title, and you can see this title tab. These are my lower thirds, so now I can, you know, jump between lower thirds or whatever by clicking these. Get that out of here. DSK2 was set to still, so whatever's in the still tab and that I have selected, and I had selected the OMG craft, I could, you know, jump to twit, or this other twit, or this twit, or whatever. Um, so those are your DSKs. Um, sometimes what I'll use, um, my so DSK1 I always keep on lower third, because that's just what you got to do. DSK2, I'll, I'll move all around. So if I'm, like, getting a product shot for Leo make sure that this is delegated so you get to choose which one you want and like say his product shot is in, in um, number five I'll bring it up and then cut to it hello everybody um, uh, I am recording it actually but this is a really bad uh, thing so don't worry about it um, now then I'm gonna do crazy stuff where I take this and I zoom in what hi mom and so I can zoom in on that and and you know sort of track it just like like that let me teach you how to do that next. So, um, uh, let's move from this area to skip over media players. Actually, media players is really simple. You have you have two DDRs. They're in these tabs right here and right here. Uh, you also have a stills tab, and then you have your title tab, and you have your sound tab. Um, everything else are these virtual inputs, which give you uh, greater control over what's actually in your virtual inputs. We'll get to virtual inputs in a second. And then audio is the other tabs. And you don't, you shouldn't have to really worry about this unless, well, we'll get to audio later. And especially this internal audio tab, don't ever touch it. Um, so that, so, and all these do is you delegate, you know, what you're going to listen to. So if I wanted DDR2 to play or DDR1 to play, I'd click it. Now, one th one thing that you can do, and you can do this with m lots of stuff, is you can select a multiple at once by pushing them both down at the same time. So that work. I think does that work? Yeah. So that works with your DSKs. That works um, with. We haven't gotten to this one yet, but your virtuals. Uh, that works with that. Um, uh, or you can just do one, or you could do like boop 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 boop, um, and you get all of them. Uh, so that's really useful to know. So if we wanted to start like both of these right at the same time, you could do that. Um, and then sound, here I'm going to stop it, um, but sound is just, and so it's like just like a media player where if I hit play, yeah, uh, Bill Meeks in the house, and then if I hit stop, it's going to stop it. Um, what that actually does is it pauses it. For some reason, they didn't think that there was enough buttons for a pause button, so there's no pause button. Um, so if you play it again, it's going to play exactly. It's going to play exactly where you stopped it. So it is a pause button. So it is a pause button. The thing is, is that if you hit stop again while it's paused, it's going to go back to the first frame. So if I hit it again, I'm back at the beginning. So if you ever want to stop something, get it right back to the, the beginning. Hit it twice, and then you'll be back at the beginning. And then you can do things like, um, you know, skip to the next one, which you can see that it just selected the next one. Then I can go to the next one, ooh, which is a Hertz tone, and then, I don't know what this one is. Ooh, that was creepy. Anyway, yeah, so, um, by the way, if you ever need to censor anyone, you can do the, man, uh, Matt, I just think you're a piece of <laughs> You can do that sort of stuff, uh, which is great. 
Um, most people don't have the tone. In, uh, they take that out of their profile. But God, I just love that tone. You can just say that, man. I love the chat room. I think that they're <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's they're really just. I mean, uh, whenever I think of them, I think. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> it's the scovalizer button. That's exactly what it is. Uh, I like how you're just seeing my conversations with my hands. I feel like I'm a dad in Rugrats, like. Actually, God, what was it? Cow and chicken? Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Charlie Brown style. Charlie Brown. Okay, so that's the media media play. That's, that's, that's really easy. Once you get up here into the positioner, it sort of gets a little bit complicated. So, the things that you can position are virtual inputs. You cannot position these first eight sources. Uh, virtual inputs are like sources, but with layers. So we'll get to virtual inputs in a second. Um, so you cannot, like, I couldn't, if I took to, to this shot or to this shot, I, there's no way for me to zoom in on this shot, if, like, say that I wanted to do that, uh, because it's just a source. That's all it is. Um, but if I had this, exa it looks exactly the same. I'm going to take to it, and you're not even going to notice it, because it looks exactly the same, because it's using the same source. But now it's a virtual input, and now I can do weird stuff to it, like... Uh, zoom in, you know, mer, zoom in on, on me. I'm going to reset that. I can, uh, uh, what is that? I can uh, rotate it around. I can fly it around just like this. I can crop it. So that's, you know, I just want the Heil mic. That's all I want. You know, uh, I can do that sort of stuff, right? And then I can re now, and the quick way to get rid of all of that is the reset button. It's your friend. So you just hit re reset. I think you can do all of No, so this one you can't do that with, which is annoying. Seems but like that would be the one where you want. Yeah, that is, that is one that you want. Um, this gets really complicated really fast because there's a few things you have to worry about with this. I guess let's move on to virtual input. No, no, okay. Not moving on to virtual inputs yet. We're, we're, we're stick with DSK. So. Um, you have to delegate, just like you do with your media, you have to delegate, here, let me cut back in. Like just like with your media, you have to delegate what you're going to change. So, and then, and then how you're going to change it. So, uh, 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 um, the virtual A and B, because you can have two layers on a virtual uh, input. Your virtual overlay, which is actually your third layer, so I just lied right there. You have, these are your three virtual input layers. And then your two DSKs. And my mic is rubbing up against my mouth. I'm sorry about that. Um, so let's say I, r I really want a DSK1, which is this uh, lower third. Uh, I really wanted it larger. So I'd s first delegate that that's the one that I'm going to change. And then I would delegate what I want. And I want it to, to position or scale it up. So I actually want to scale it up. So I'm going to delegate that. And then now whatever I do with this knob is going to do that thing. So, oh my god. Episode 2, you wouldn't believe. And then I'm going to reset that back because that looks really dumb, right? Uh, if I wanted to uh, rot it, I can now grab it. And, and th the things that the... That the uh, Key, the, the thing does, the what is it, joystick does, uh, you'll, you're just going to kind of have to learn on your own. You're just going to have to play with it. Um, because position and scale, when you twist the knob, it's going to zoom in and zoom out. When you move the, the knob around, it's going to uh, move its position. So I guess the first position would be blah, blah, blah. Scale would be in and out. That kind of makes sense. Rot, um, if you move the... the uh, thing around like that. It's going to uh, tilt it or, or, or spin it just like that. So it's going to go woo, woo, up, down, up, down. And then if you do the other thing, it's going to rotate in the direction that you turn it. So if you, you know, right or left, that kind of makes sense. Crop is really weird. If you do it in and out, it's going to uh, crop everything in a 16-9 aspect ratio sort of thing. Now, uh, let me reset that. Um, and if you do the other one, it's going to uh, uh, crop the side. But this doesn't work for the other side. So if for some reason I wanted to crop the other side of the of the uh, the lower third, what you have to do is push the top button down, and then you're switched to the other side. So if I just wanted ready, I could do that. Crop is kind of a dumb thing because you can't even feather, which kind of sucks. And move that over, and then uh, if I want the bottom, you can tell just by pushing up. I can't, I can't get to the bottom, so I, I need to push in the button, and then get just the bottom, and then move 
that, move that back. And then the top, I don't have to push the button because I was having that problem earlier. So there we go. That's how I'd you know crop that. So let's reset that. So that was just for DSK one. One of the reasons that if I like there's a product shot, I'll put it on a DSK is so that when I when I move to it, I can do my delegation to DSK two and do the position scale. So if I take it in and then I, I zoom in, I can do that without making that thing a virtual set because or a virtual input because sometimes I might have a set that looks similar to this where oops. What did I do? Um, why did that happen? That doesn't make sense because I'm on fade. Why did it do that? Why is it doing that? It shouldn't do that. A virtual 5 is a virtual buffer. Huh. I don't know why it's doing that. Sometimes the TriCaster has buggy. Because it should be on. Yeah, see, now it's fine. Yeah, it, it just shouldn't have been doing that. I don't know why I did that. Um, <laughs> turn the TriCaster on peaceful mode. Darn, I'm so mad that I didn't put it on peaceful mode. Anyway, um, so... So, like, say say that I'm in this. This is one. Of, this is virtual input five. So I can't really zoom in on this like I did with this one because I, it's a set, right? So, um, and normally what I want to zoom into is Leo's screen, and that is what I have in this this in this black area would be Leo's screen. Let me transition um, here. Let put me there, and then that, right? So, like, what I want to do is zoom in. On Leo's screen, and I want to lose Leo. I don't want Leo in it. So what I'll do is I'll make uh, what is that four? Four virtual two is now four. I'll fade into it, and it's already zoomed in. So I could I could do whatever, even though this is a DSK. If I move this off the screen, you can see that there's stuff below it because this is keying it out. That's what your downstream Kia does. Um, so that's just a, sort of a technique. I guess let's move on to virtual sets. Virtual sets are sort of like uh, layers, or they, I mean, they are layers. You, the three layers that you have is the overlay layer, the video one layer, and then the video two layer, and that's what these three things are. So pretty, we've we've kind of made our way around the board. What did I do? Oh, that's what I did. Screw that up. So like, okay, so what just happened there was I was on I was on six. But you, but I can tell that input six is this. See, if I go, if I switch over to input six, it's this shot. Let me get rid of that lower third. Oh, go away. Um, but I was on. If I transfer over, it, that's a different shot. So, anyway, I guess I haven't taught you virtual inputs yet, so it sort of doesn't make sense. But anyway, um, so we've kind of made our way around the board, right? So this all is your your previews and and um, um, programs. This is your utility bus for for the. Uh, um, for your DSKs and stuff like that. This is your transition block or, or whatever. You got the media, you got the positioner. So now we're up here at this level. All of this is your virtual stuff. So you have your three layers right here, one, two, and three. Um, and then uh, your delegate, your, your delegation for which l which input you're gonna change. So you have your eight, eight virtual um, uh, sets. And so if I wanted to change virtual set one, I would go up here and click one. Now then this follow preview button, see how it's lit up? What that's gonna do is anytime that I put a set into into preview, it's gonna change. See how it's you know, how it's jumping all around? I wonder if I can turn this down. Now the chat room can see a little bit better. So anytime anytime that I move um my uh my my virtual set in preview, it's gonna jump. Some people like that, some people don't. I tend to not like that because normally I'm going to want to zoom into my screen an awful lot. So I keep it, I keep this delegated on eight and then I don't change it. Or um, uh, like I, w I want to change something for everyone. Like, um, so uh, anyway, I'll, I'll get to that later. So so that's what this does is it's, it's your delegation. So if you wanted to say change um, input A on everything you could select them all and then change input one for everything right um, that sort of stuff uh, 
So your three layers are um, the overlay, video A, and video B. We always keep all of them, and we can check, uh, on virtual buffer for the overlay. What you can do is you can send items, or you can send things to a virtual buffer, and then it's held in that buffer until you change it. S and that is useful for lower thirds. So if I go to one, uh, let's go ahead and turn, and, and, um, and you can take, in, in, you, where before you could fade an overlay on with your DSK, now you're using a you're you're going to bring in the, a virtual buffer, which is a different which is different than a DSK. It works like a DSK, but it it works differently. And it's this fade overlay button, which is next to your overlay layer, right? Or fade or take, you can do either. So right now it looks like it's on something that's black. So I'm going to go in here to title. I'm going to choose this episode one. I'm going to right click it and send to see these virtual buffers. So if I send this to virtual buffer one, which is the one that's that's live right now, I'm going to send it to it, and then I take that overlay. Now it is the lower third, right? And I normally can fade a lower third like that too. Um, now what's happened is uh, that whatever that default thing that's in the virtual buffer is just black, and that's why now all of my virtuals don't make any sense because I faded it up for everything when I took when I took the thing. So let, let me just add a few of these. I'm, I'm going to add that to two. I'm going to add this one to three. I'm going to add this one to four. And I'm going to add this one to five. So now when I hit it, you can see that one, two, three, four, four huh, I missed three in here. So let me right click send to virtual buffer three. Bam. Now it looks better. Um, so what I will normally do is I'll have all the guests lower thirds attached to their virtual buffer and then I'll fade them down across all the virtual buffers. I'll do this thing where I select all the guests and then I hit fade and it looks super pro because even if you're in the middle of a fade and you cut to something else, um, like that, those two are different um, uh, DSK, you know, different lower thirds. Even if you're in the middle of switching to someone else, it looks super pro because everything is fading out at the same time. Where before, it would look something like, if I was on, it looks something like uh, this. Where it fades out and then you cut and it's gone. Or, even worse, oop, where uh, you're on this one and you fade and then you, and then it's like there. Or, it's like in the middle of, it's like, so anyway, so that's what I do to, to keep it all fresh and clean. Um, so, and you can also, um, if you want multiple, multiple, and so, okay, so now, now that you've learned that, you know, there's layers or whatever, now let's go back to the positioner. So if I'm on <clears throat> number one, I can bring up my, my uh, lower third and I can change it by hitting the virtual overlay and then moving it all around, right? by selecting that one on, on, actually let's do that with six because that would make lots of sense, right? Um, and I need to change that to, for some reason TriCaster is acting really weird. It's probably because I'm doing so much crazy stuff with it. And it's like continuously playing music and videos and stuff. Anyway, um, so let's go ahead and bring up that. So now I'm on the virtual overlay layer, so I can make that really big or whatever. I could go over to virtual uh, to layer one and zoom me out and then over here on layer B you can see that I've selected black but I could change that to whatever I want I could change that to that 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 whatever I want let's give it chat room hooray chat room so I'll, I'll select my one again I'll move myself up here I'm actually whoop, sorry uh, my mic isn't feeling very good so let's say you know what this is this shot right here is really dumb and it should really be a person, right? So I'm just going to go over here to my A layer and change it, bink, to one of us, right? So that's sort of how virtual layers work, and you can change them all using all of this. So, so let's say let's say that you just got into a profile, and you you click, you know, make virtual set six go live, and you're like, what the heck is this? I don't understand 
what's going on here. I have like a small video up in the corner, the lower third's way too big, and I have video as my as my background thing. First thing that I do is run up here, make sure that you have the correct, like if for say I had virtual one selected and I hit reset, it's not gonna do a thing because it's resetting virtual one. I'm gonna do virtual six because that's what's live. I'm gonna hit reset and it's gonna change everything. Go to virtual B, reset it, virtual overlay, reset it. And then I'm also gonna be like, well, virtual six does not need freaking five on it. I'm gonna give it black because that would that would look way better. A big problem that something that I've had is that if your virtual set is on a DDR with sound, um you can cut away from it. Let's see, what's in my DDR2? Uh, let's do DDR1. Um and you if you cut back to it. It starts to play that if your DDR was on autoplay. So if I move this out of the way, you can see, and that has sound in it. So you'll be like switching, and you'll be like, "Why? Where's the sound coming from? I don't see it anywhere on screen." On, on screen, and it's because one of your DDRs is playing in the background. So the very first thing I do when 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 I open up a brand new profile, normally people have changed this in the profile, is I select all the inputs. Let's go back to six and get rid of that. Actually, and change that to this. Um, I select all the inputs. I say make it black, and then um, all my all my base layer is black, which uh, makes sure that you don't accidentally do a DDR. Any questions? I'm sure that you learned everything that I just told you, so um, there'll be a test. And if you if you get a question wrong, you can't be here. You can't for work. For every question yeah. wrong, you cut off one of my fingers. Exactly. 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 Um, yeah, no, that was so much information, and I'm positive that you probably didn't get it all. Um, the best way to learn this stuff is just by doing it. So um, at some point, you're just going to have to do it. And what's fun is we've canceled all of the shows that we used to test people with. So the only way to test people with is to give them an important show. <laughs> so have fun with that. I learned on Twists, and they don't even use the video in there. Uh, recorded version, so that's why we normally gave gave that to twist, gave gave people who were learning to twist. Um, uh, 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 change that back. Cool. Well, that's it. I'm gonna go home and fall asleep. Uh, see you guys later. Um, now, oh man, you know what I just realized? I taught you on my profile, and so now my profile's all screwed up. So. Let me make sure that everything is not screwed up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, see, five, five, five is on input two. I don't want that. I want that. Six, seven, eight. Um, my sound should be fine. Apparently, I had DSK one cropped out of existence. Cool. That should work fine. And that should work fine. Good. Um, cool. Uh, good. Oh, and by the way, if you want to change your transitions, that's what this area does. You can't do that from the board. So if I wanted this explosion transition to go into reruns, the reruns that I have up quit quit game we'll explode into reruns that'll be the last thing we do start with TNT and grab all of these bam and let's explode into reruns goodbye everyone uh oh you have to choose reruns when you do that This is Tech News Today for Wednesday, July 11th, 2012. Tech News Today is brought to you by Ford, featuring the My Ford mobile smartphone app for electric vehicles. The My Ford mobile app makes the electric driving experience fun and efficient. Learn more about Ford electric vehicle technologies at Ford.com slash technology. And by Gazelle, the easy way to sell your iPhone, iPad, iPod, or Android smartphones from your home or office so you can get the latest versions. Get a risk-free quote that's good for 30 days at Gazelle.com. 
Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Maya Zachter. I'm Jason Howell. And we are here to keep you up to date on the most important stories in the tech world. Put them in context for you. Lloyd Case will join us to dig deeper in the discussion section. But first, the top 10 stories of the day in the news views. If you're excited about Mountain Lion, the forthcoming...